protest that would change the course of history in South Africa. Thousands of women from various racial backgrounds marched to the citadel of power to demand the abolishment of past laws, defying the odds and challenging an impressive and patriarchal system. Women began mobilizing themselves and throughout history, several formations like the Bantu Women's League and the Federation of South African Women were formed. Those who led 20,000 women to the union buildings remember the day that would be written in the history books of the country. We went into those grounds, we marched up to the uh, uh, Prime Minister's o uh, office. So for that day, the, women's, uh, the women uh, 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 achieved freedom, confidence in themselves, that they could go where they want to go. It was a multitude uh, of women, it was an army of women, and those were the women that marched that day to the Union buildings to voice their opposition and their disgust and their indignation against the uh, Dompas, as it was called that day. And they were tired and they said, enough is enough. The memories is women coming from all over the country uh, under difficult uh, circumstances, but uh, determined to get there and they got there. I can't even describe how was it like to me, <clears throat> because that day, I, to me, I didn't even know whether I was Mary or Jane, or Jack or Jim. And the way I was overwhelmed, seeing women coming, determined to do what they want to do, handing in their petition, urging the government that they will never rest until all discriminatory laws against women and children have been abolished. Decades later, the struggle continues. South African women are faced with different struggles like the brutal killings of women and children, the triple challenges of poverty, inequality, unemployment, gender parity, and lately adding to that list is the novel coronavirus. Through some of its efforts, the ANC Women's League has managed to achieve 50% of female representation in ANC structures and government. Last year, they accused government of being lukewarm in dealing with issues of gender-based violence, but believe more needs to be done to beat the social ill. The issue that is one of the issues that are on top of the agenda of the African National Congress is the issue uh, of uh, gender-based violence and uh, femicide. And the, uh, at least uh, for the first time in the uh, last NEC of the ANC, we've had uh, someone uh, agreeing uh, with us that um, the issue of uh, or violence against women and uh, children must be declared a state of disaster. We had said uh, we wanted it to be declared a state of emergency, but at least uh, there are views that uh, are moving towards uh, the correct direction. But one young leader says issues dealing with women should not be used as political weapons. One thing remains clear, that gender-based violence is comfortably being used as a conversation appetizer in political discussions. Gender-based violence is not taken seriously, or if it were taken seriously, then we would see a government that, put its money, that puts its money where their mouths at. The soon-to-be-launched EFF Women's Command promises to bring more radical views and policies in attaining justice for women. The EFF must launch the Women's Command before the third national people's assembly one political analyst explains the role of women formations within politics the women's organizations and the women like such as the women's league the da's women's network and um, the eff's um, impending um, women's command is that they often are focused on political imperatives rather than the social justice imperatives that um, gender equality and rethinking gender dynamics in our society require. And so we, we have to be um, cautious about what role we expect from these organizations. Is it important for us to um, challenge political organizations to mainstream women's agendas and to mainstream gender issues? Absolutely. Do these organizations always accomplish that? Um, um, that is doubtful and in question.
As the class of 1956 fought against an unjust system, the modern-day woman is implored to pick up the baton and lead the fight against social ills like gender-based violence. Natasha Piri, SABC News,